there we go so welcome everybody for those of you that are new my name is Lee Moore Weber and I am tonight I'm actually going to do a show um, thanks to the fabulous um, Cartabella Echo Park family um, I am going to be creating a layout a mixed media layout using the brand new wildflower collection okay sorry about the glare when I put the camera down there won't be any glare so I'll switch the cameras in a, in a moment um, this collection is so ridiculously awesome I'll go through the entire collection with you when I switch cameras um, and this is from Echo Park this is the ombre um, essentials which is awesome it's like um, it's like essentially um, it's not cardstock but um, it's essentials. It's what you use to, you know, to create stuff with your um, other projects, right? And they match each collection, which is so fabulous. Um, so tonight, we're going to create a fabulous mixed media layout. And at the end of the show, I'm going to actually pick um, two lovely winners. Actually, our admins are going to pick two lovely winners. And um, I know you guys are going to ask this. So... Um, there is Christina from Your Memories Here. So ladies, my admins, if you want to put the link, um, Your Memories Here is going to be carrying this collection or the um, Wildflowers collection for you um, by pre-orders if you would like. So you can go ahead and message her and uh, the ladies will post the links um, for you on the chat right now. And for those of you that are watching the YouTube um, version I will post the link to her uh, store below okay and then um, last but not least um, I believe we're gonna have a couple people from um, Echo Park and Cartabella as this collection is from Cartabella and then this this collection is from Echo Park and Cartabella is a sister company of Echo Park if, in case you didn't know and they are so fabulously amazing to work with. And um, so anyways, two winners. Uh, what else? Your memory's here. Let's get started. I'm going to switch cameras. Okay. So here we go. Let's see here. Let's just make sure that everybody can see me okay. Can everybody see me okay? I'm going to turn on one more light so that we have lots of light going on let's see if it works that's better huh a little bit a little bit a little bit there might be a little bit of a glare due to the photo but hopefully we can still see okay can everybody see me okay i just want to make sure okay perfect awesome awesome all right let's get started so this is the layout that i'll be creating tonight super fun layout um it's got quite a bit of layers, which you can't uh, tell, and the I kind of like the subtlety of the mixed media techniques. Um, so I find that sometimes, you know, with these type of collections, I have a much harder time uh, creating mixed media style. Um, however, this collection in particular, I'm going to say, has become one of my new faves. So why don't we go through the collection really quickly, because I just want you to see it because it's really that fabulous. So I'm going to pull it out of the package. It's a total must-have, you guys. And if you um, have a retail store near you that doesn't have the collection, be sure to ch uh, let them know. All right, so let's go through it really quick. The papers, I have to tell you guys, I love because they're super thick paper. They're almost like a cardstock uh, paper. And I don't know, you probably can't tell on the camera, but it's a textured type paper, which is really beautiful. Um, it's double-sided. So I love these flowers because they're very easy to fussy cut. And then this is the back side. Okay. And then look at these fabulous patterns. Gorgeous. And look at this. I mean, it's the mixed media. This is so awesome. And this, for sure, one of my absolute favorite pieces. Look at these amazing, amazing images just stunning and then this is the back side so very bold patterns a cute little sequence pattern but then look at this funky side just lovely and this collection again is called wildflower this i absolutely love 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 
And then here's the back side with the little trees. Okay. And of course, right, feathers are really in. So look at these feathers that you can totally fussy cut. All right. And this, this pattern's a little bit busy, but um, it still works in small quantities, right? And then these are these gorgeous globes, which you can totally fussy cut out if you're a fussy cutter. And then another bold pattern on the back. But check out these tags, you guys. Just so awesome. Slow down and enjoy the ride. It's so really fun to do some um, art journaling tags with this. Or art journal page, I should say. Girl like a wildflower. So pretty. And then I love this backside. Look at that. Gorgeous, right? And then another fabulous one. Love this one. And then this is so cute with the little banners. I don't know if you guys can see. It looks really busy on the camera, but it says, like, try again slow down, think big, be brave, say yes, say thank you. So lots of little sayings, really pretty. And then this one, and look at this backside. Yumminess, yummy, yummy, yummy. This one's for sure my favorite piece out of all of them. And it says, you know, I'd pick you, photos are memories to hold in your hands. Just, I mean, just so gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then check out the back side. Is this not Lee Moore? Does, not, does this not scream me? Oh my goodness. So me. Love this. And then this one. I actually really like this one. I think it's funky. And then check out the back side. My fave. So that is that. And then, of course, of course, just like all the Cartabella collections, it comes with the fabulous sticker sheet. And I love these because you can mount them on chipboard or you can put three-dimensional dots on these puppies and they just pop right up. And we're going to use a couple of them on my layout. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on the layout. And I'll set this aside and let's get moving. All right, I'm just going to put this off to the side. And for those of you that are uh, coming late, this is the layout that we'll be creating tonight. Okay, really fun. Lots of little techniques on here that you can take away with you. All right, so the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to grab three different patterns. I'm going to grab this one, which is um, this one on the back. It's called Aztec. And then I'm also going to grab, which other one am I going to grab? I'm going to grab the orange one. Where'd it go? Hang on. Just grabbing it. Here we go. I'm going to grab this one, which is sequins, because on the back there's little sequins. And actually, those are the two I'm going to grab for now. All right, so let's start with those. And so what you want to do, of course, you want to cut your little um, strips off. Okay. And sometimes I keep these because I use this. Okay. I'm not going to tonight, but that's what I do. And then let's cut this one off as well. All right, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Can everybody see okay? All right. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to take my craft mat, or not craft mat, glass mat, my cutting mat, and I'm going to take a ruler, and I'm going to take a craft knife, which I have right here, and I love using my Primo one because it's super ergonomical and very sharp, so it cuts like butter, and so what you're going to do is you're going to literally take it from right here, you're going to apply your ruler right here, okay, just about leaving about that much, okay, and you are actually going to, if you want, if it makes it easier for you, you can draw a line with your pen to about here. Leave a little bit um, in the end. Don't cut it all the way through or your paper's going to cut or you're going to take that piece completely off. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your craft knife, okay, and you are going to follow this line all the way across. And do you remember I said this paper is really thick. It's almost like a cardstock style paper, so you may need to run your knife a couple times until it cuts all the way through. Okay? So just like that, you might need to pop a little bit of it off. 
just like that. It's a little bit harder to do on camera, of course. Okay, so you have that piece right there, just like so. And then you're going to cut another piece about right there or so, okay? Lots of fun little take. Oops, just broke this piece. You're gonna line it up and cut all the way through, just like that, okay? And you'll pop this off. And don't rip this off because you actually need this, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip that over. You're gonna add some glue to the back of this, okay? And I like to use my beacon zip dry for paper, okay? That's tech, usually what I use, or I use my uh, ATG gun. Either one works really great. And then I'm just gonna line that right up. So it's one of those pieces that you just do not throw away, okay? And then what ends up happening, you guys, is sometimes we get a little bit intimidated by the really bold patterns and we don't know how to use them. So this is a really nice, subtle way to use your um, bold patter patterns, okay? And I'll kind of show you how to do that throughout this layout. Okay, now the next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take that other paper that we talked about, okay? And you're gonna line that right up here, okay? So that it pokes right through. But we don't need a whole, we don't need the whole thing, correct? We just need a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a little piece, right, just about right there, so that it fits. Just a straight edge is perfect enough. And then we're gonna apply it right to the back, all right, just like so. So let's apply a little bit of glue right at the edges. Just like so. Don't apply glue in the middle, remember, because you're going to add it right to the layout. So you don't want to add it to the edge. Okay? Just like so. There we go. What do you guys think? Oh, sorry, it's out of focus. There we go. Cool, huh? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece off right here because what we wanna do is we wanna ensure that our eye is always um, going into that full, um, it's always focusing fully, okay, on our page. And if we have one bold pattern on the top and nothing on the bottom, our eyes play a little bit of tricks on us. So then what I'm going to do is I want to, I cut a little piece off the bottom. So now I want to um, add an orange piece on the bottom of it. How do I know? Well, all I do is I just measure about that much, okay, that piece that I cut off. And then what I do is I just take a little pen, okay, oops, and there we go, okay? And then I just line it right up there, just like that, perfect. All right, but I don't need the whole thing, so I am gonna cut a little piece off because I can use the rest another time. So about that much, simply perfect. No need to waste paper, correct? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add glue all the way here I buy, you know what, they, um, Michael's has beacons. No, yes, Michael's in Canada has beacons. It has Zip Dry, 3-in-1, Fabri-Tac, so does Walmart. They all carry it in Canada. I'm in Canada, so definitely, you can certainly get it. And I know lots of scrapbook stores carry it as well. 
All right. All right, just like that, right? Really cool, all right? And you can see the same pattern um, on both sides. Now, the next piece that we're gonna focus on is this piece right here, okay? And so what you're gonna need for this is something super simple. You're gonna need a circle. You can use a circle cutter, you can use whatever you want. And we're gonna take one of the sheets from the Ombre collection, and this is where those fabulous um, uh, what do you call them? Like a sort of essential papers come into play, which I really love. And so I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to move this off to the side for a moment. And I kind of want to focus more on the whiter part. I don't want a whole bunch of yellow popping out because I'm already going to have yellow on it. So I'm going to go about right there. Okay. Just like so. And then I like to, I like to take because I lost the piece that actually cuts this, this is from a circle cutter, don't laugh at me. Um, I take a pen and I just trace it and then I'm just gonna go ahead with my scissors and cut it right out. Because I think it's easy that way. We're gonna take our scissors and find some. Here's my fussy cutting scissors that don't hurt my hands. You guys know me and my carpal tunnel, it's pretty bad. People ask me all the time, what kind of scissors do you use? I use these Fiskars ones. These are the spring-loaded scissors. They're awesome. I love them. If it's starting to get a little bit choppy for you guys, there's just a lot of people logging on right now. So just hang tight. All right. All right, here we go. That was pretty quick, huh? So then I'm going to bring my layout back and I'm going to apply it to about right there. Okay. So let's go ahead and glue this on. This backside is really cool too. Perfect. Perfect. And we're going to apply it right there, just like that. Okay. Go and just make sure you line it up. And did you notice when I cut the circle, I didn't cut a full circle. I left that one edge so that I can butt up against the edge of my uh, paper. All right. Now here comes the really fun part, you guys. The really far, fun part is using the fabulous Tim Holtz stencils. And, oh, I forgot to grab the paints. I left them up there. What was I thinking? All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to create this really, really fun sun type pattern. All right, and we're going to do that by using the Tim Holtz stencil rays. I never wash my these stencils when I use acrylic, um, but this comes off really, really easily. Like you can scratch this off because I'm using Distress Paints, okay, by Tim Holtz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start right here. I'm going to make sure that my rays are all the way to the end, okay? Just like this. It's about right there or so. Just like that. And then I'm going to start with my orange, okay? And this orange distress paint is Spice Marmalade. Mar marmalade, marmalade. However you wanna say it. Marmalade, marmalade just like so and then what I like to do is I actually like to take a little paintbrush and I usually like to use either um, like one of these acrylic brushes works really great okay and I also like to grab a little bit of water which I have right beside me and I dilute it just a little bit okay and just it kind of gets in there a little bit better Don't do it all the way through because we need the yellow next. Any questions, anybody? So far? Okay. Now, the next one that I'm going to use is uh, mustard seed. And I always prep them first on the side of my mat. So I always have a mat. And once it's flowy enough, I go ahead and make sure you always press down 
and apply. And I just apply right there because I'm gonna use my brush to blend them through. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of water and then blend. Oh, let me clean my brush off a little bit. It's got too much orange. There we go. And then I'm blending it into the orange. Okay, don't worry about going over the circle. It doesn't matter. It is a mixed media page. So you don't have to be perfect. Perfection is so not required, you guys. In fact, the less perfect, the better. And you guys know what I say. There's just so not, there's just no such thing as perfection anyway. So, so stop trying to be perfect. Right? My, my preaching for the day. Okay, right, just like that. This is going to look so cool as soon as it's lifted. All right. And if you want a little bit more orange, add a little bit more orange. Blend as you wish. That's the trick. Blend as you wish. All right. And we're going to lift. And ta-da. Isn't that super cool? Love it. Love, love, love. All right. So I'm going to put this off to the side. And now... You'll notice that you'll find maybe a little bit, it's a little bit bright. If you notice, mine is a little bit on this side, it's a little bit more muted. Do you see that? How do we do that? No problem. I'll show you in a moment. The first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and dry this. Okay. Sorry about the heat gun, it's a little bit loud. You like questions? Perfect. These are the Distress Paints by Tim Holtz. Okay. Perfect. That's as much as I want to dry. Now the next thing that I want to do and because um, this paper is quite thick, you'll find that there won't be a whole lot of warping, which is really awesome. That's kind of what I like. And then what I do is I always have a little dish, okay? Sorry, I didn't mean to drop that so hard. And then I have some gesso. You can grab some white acrylic paint. I happen to have gesso in front of me, so that's what I'm using. Um, and I like kind of the transparency that it, it gives, whereas acrylic is a little bit, um, it, it's not as translucent. So. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same brush, which I took all the way over there. I'm just cleaning it off. And I always have, by the way, a little baby wipe sitting beside me and I kind of clean my brush off. It really helps because it's always moist. And then I'm just gonna grab a little bit of the gesso and a little bit of water, okay? A little bit of water, a little bit of gesso so that it's kind of runny, okay? You don't want too much. And then very lightly, just apply a little bit of white, just like so, and I'll blend it in just a moment. We're just going to apply a little bit of white, and it'll tone it down just a little bit. Those rays won't be as bright, okay? Notice that already? And then you're just going to blend right in, and you can take even your finger, okay, and blend that right in because it's nice and wet. Since you have some water, it's kind of like using watercolors, okay? And it just kind of tones down those rays a little bit. Not so bright. It'll blend into the page a little bit better. For those of you that are new, I hope you're learning something new. And if you've never done any mixed media techniques, I hope that you give something like this a try because it's really fun and easy and it just adds a little bit of something to your layouts. All right, what do you guys think, right? It toned it down a little bit. It's not so in your face anymore. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is build a little bit more layers. Now, um, we want to take our photo and start framing it. Now, I wanna talk about the photo for just a moment. Now, do you ever notice that when you print a photo sometimes, 
Um, the colors may be really great on your photo, but maybe there's one color that kind of doesn't quite fit. You, if you go to Photoshop or even if you have GIMP, GIMP is a free program that you can download. It's like Photoshop. So if you can't afford uh, to get Photoshop, you can download it for free. And you can actually, there's a function where you can actually take out the co certain colors. So literally I could have just left maybe her apron. Um, but what I did is I actually took out the color of the grass because the green really did not suit this layout whatsoever. And I loved how the rest of her outfit and such totally matched the collection. And she's picking flowers, which is so cool because the collection is all about, you know, wild flowers. And literally that's what we were doing. We were doing some, um, it was the mud pie day. So we had to pick wild flowers and we made mud pies outside, which is so much fun. So that's what I'm going to use. And I'm going to go ahead and frame this layout or sorry, this, um, frame this um, photo. So I'm just going to grab actually my leftovers from my last layout that I did because I think it's important to use our leftovers always. And what I used actually was the feather lay, um, paper, which was, what was it called? Feathers. I believe that's what I used. It's going to frame that up about right there. All right. So we're going to take our zip dry, or you can use, sometimes I actually like to use my ETG gun for my photos, to be honest with you. And so I'm going to go ahead and frame that up just like so. And we're going to double layer this puppy too, because I think double layering gives it a really nice look. Okay. And the next one that we're going to take is we're going to take that arrows one. And let me see if I have any pieces left over here. Cause I think I did. I thought I did. Yes, I do. So I have some leftover pieces right here. So I'm going to take this one, which has the cool little, um, tags, but that's okay. That's okay. And then we're going to give it a little bit of a bigger, um, this is how you use bold patterns, by the way, if you frame them, you'll find that they won't be so in your face and hard to work with. Okay. And so I just like to give it a little bit of a bigger frame, just like so. And then I go ahead and cut that up. Fabulous. I'm getting lots of viewers tonight again. It's awesome. Just like that. All right, nice big frame. You find it's a little bit too big. Mine's a little bit bigger than the last layout, but that's okay. Well, actually, let's cut it down just a tiny bit. It's a little bit too big. And I won't be able to do some of the techniques that I kind of wanted to do. Just trimming it down just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit. And you guys know I don't measure because it's mixed media, which kind of gives me the freedom to have fun. Don't measure. The more imperfect, the better. Right? I say that all, all the time. All right. So just about right there. Really, really cute. It's kind of starting to come together. Now, uh, before I apply this, what I'm going to do is we're going to do some more little fun mixed media techniques. And what we're going to take is we're going to take a stamp by Prima. This is a really cool stamp. This is called, um, I don't know what it's called. It doesn't ha have a name, but it's one of those Finnabar clear stamps and it's 960810. Okay. Really cute. And I'm going to take that out and we're going to do something really fun. Now, in order to do this technique, you do not want to use a block. Okay. Cause if you use a block, you're not going to get quite the um, look that you want. And then what I like to do is I like to take my Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft um, 
big brush pens and I don't um, and you can stamp with this that's what, what I love about it and you don't want to uh, put ink all over the thing you just want to do it on certain pieces okay just like that can you guess you, you, the camera kind of shows the dark parts and then what you're gonna do is actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually frame this puppy just little pieces because we're gonna doodle on this anyway so I don't actually care if I get so now I kind of know where my pieces are going to be. And then now I'm going to take this and I'm going to off center it. And you're going to roll your stamp just like that. Okay. And you're going to roll a little bit more about down here. And you're not going to re-ink it. Okay. Just little pieces. You're going to do a couple up here. Okay. And just throughout. Just a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of texture. All right. And it's just... It's just a whole lot of fun to just stamp over and over. That's all you need, okay? And you'll see how cool it looks once we have it all together. Just gives it a little something. And then you can go ahead and put that back in your bag, all right? Just like it said. Now, the next thing that we want to do is something really, really fun. And um, the fun part is creating all those splatter marks that I created right here okay like right here and right here actually before we do that let's do this piece right here so the next thing that you actually want to do is you want to kind of grab as many bold patterns in the collection as you want so I'm going to use this fabulous pink one that we just used and we're going to cut random strips okay some thin some thick and we're going to create little banners so some thin, some thick. So let's create a couple banners. One with this, one with the, let's see, I'm just gonna grab my scraps because I think it's fun that way. Let's see, what other patterns did I have? I had, I had a little bit of the ombre. I had one of these and had, what did I do with the other ones? Thought I had them right here. Yep, one, this one. I used that one. And I used a little bit of this one. And I believe that's it. All right. So let's cut some strips of those. So I cut the pink one, which I don't know where it went. Did I put it up to the side already? I did, didn't I? I don't know. Oh, yeah, here's the one. So that we left, we had left over from last time. And then let's cut a little bit of, oh, here it is. It was hiding on me already in the cutter. Then we have this one, which is a little bit thicker. And I kind of want to get a little bit of the blue. So I'm actually going to cut right here. I'm going to cut this strip off. And then I want a little bit of that blue to poke through. Just like that. Fabulous. Okay. We're going to cut little banners in just a moment. And then we want one of these. And I kind of like the pink reindeer. So. And then we're going to cut about how thin do you want? We want it kind of thick this time. Nice thick one. Because you want variation in sizes. Okay. I don't know what you want. About that thick okay so this will be kind of your thickest one and then last but not least you're going to take this guy which is the ombre and you kind of want the darker piece so oh my gosh Ava's screaming can you hear her oh boy I think she's giving daddy a hard time little monkey if you don't know which one Ava is this is Ava she's my She's my crazy child. All right, just like that. So now in order to create little banners, these are really, really easy to make if you've never made one before. All I do is I just take my scissors, okay, just like so, and then you cut right in the middle, and then from the edge, you meet it in the middle. Edge to middle, and you have a cute little banner, okay? So that's one. We have one more here. And you can do them in different uh, lengths. 
but we're going to be tucking them underneath each other anyway, so it doesn't really matter about the length. You can do them all the same length and then cut the excess off. You won't need these anymore, so you can use them later. And then this is the big one. All right. About, I don't know, right there or so. And then one more, or two more, I should say. Let's do this side. It's a little bit nicer. Kind of ripped that other side a little bit. Okay, just like so. And then last but not least is this puppy. And I kind of like this feather right there. Questions? Anybody? No questions yet? The ladies are answering it for you, which is, I'm sure, awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and because I've already created those uh, fabulous lines, frames, I know exactly where this um, photo is kind of going to go. All right, pretty cool, right? You can start to see a little bit. Let me lift this up so that you can kind of see where those funky little stamp images that we did are. And now what you're going to start doing is you're going to start layering these um, banners. Okay, so we'll start with this one. Oops. And we're going to start that one right on the bottom. Oops, I just put glue on my photo. That's not good. Okay, about right there. Just like so. You don't have to be perfect but right there now the next one what you want to do is you want to pop it up so that you get a little bit of dimension so I like to take my foam dots and line it up and you guys know me I use a lot of foam dots because I hate it when my stuff caves in okay There's nothing worse than when your stuff caves it drives me crazy 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 Okay, so I lift this up, and then you want to stagger it, right? So now this is kind of going to go over top of the other one, okay, just like so. And then this one's going to go underneath. Just like that. Perfect the mundo like that and then we've got this guy which is the one that kind of matches this because when you're creating you always want to make sure that you fulfill on those uh, patterns and this one's going to be raised okay so we're going to take some foam dots again always create in an X or a W okay. and I know I've talked about this a million times on my shows but and then this one we're going to tuck in quite a bit okay so that the almost like over top of it there we go just like that love it just like this and then this guy is nice and bold which kind of gives it a little something something and this one just tucked in underneath there okay. perfect okay do you guys see that how cool is that right and that already gives it something now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and place this down. So in order to create dimension, I'm going to go ahead and add some foam dots to the back of this. Okay. Sometimes t the foam tape works really great, but I have these in my hand, so that's what I'm going to use. And you can get them both in black or in white. Okay. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Any other questions, anybody? Yeah, I really like these. These are my favorite. They they don't hurt my hand, and I, I really have issues with my hands going numb and such. So um, this is, they're my favorite scissors. I highly, highly recommend them. 
Okay, so that's nice and dimensionalized right now, which is really fun. Um, the next thing that you want to do for this next piece, you really want to make sure that you have your um, photo protected. So I like to take just like a, a scratch piece of paper, and I'm just going to kind of cut it a rough size of my photo so that when I splatter right now, it's not going to get on my photo. If a little bit gets on the edges, I'm okay. As long as her face isn't, you know, pink or anything, then I'm good to go, right? You can use paper towel as well as it soaks it really, really well. So the next thing that you're going to grab is um, one of these, right? Or a, whatever you want, okay? And I have, what I've done is I needed to match the pink, and so sometimes you don't have that perfect color, right? And you're like, what do I do? I've taken Lindy Stamping um, Hottie Patati, or yeah, Hottie Patati Hot Pink, which I love, 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 love. See how hot it is? It's awesome and really shimmery. But it wasn't, it was a little bit too hot for this. And this need to, needed to be a little bit muted. So what I did is I took some Hottie Patati spray and I put it in just a regular, um, misting bottle and I added a little bit of my liquid gesso and so then I shook it up and then it gave me the perfect color to match okay so sometimes you can create your own little um, sprays right using what you've got so um, I'm not going to use it as a spray however what I am going to use it as is a really fun flickering effect which many of you have seen over and over and over again in my shows because it's one of my absolute favorite techniques to use. So you want to take a fan brush of your choice and you're going to open that up and you're going to stick it right in there and you're going to just swirl it up really, really well. All right. And you are going to flicker. And the harder you do it, watch your computer, the harder you do it, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay really fun okay that's what we've got so far and then if you want to make really bigger globs you just let it drop like really close oh I need to grab some more there we go okay and let them drop come on baby lots of foam bigger globs okay and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to do that right here don't have to be perfect the less you flicker the bigger globs you'll get like this guy Okay, can you see? Let me just show you. Lift it up. See that big glob right there? Okay. And then if you flicker, you're going to get more of a splattered effect. Okay, and I totally just got my computer a little bit. Just like that. I'm going to add just a little bit more. Perfect. And then we want to do the exact same thing about down here. See, I flickered myself and I got it on my apron. Uh-huh. This is why I wear an apron. Always wear an apron. Just a little bit down here. Perfect. Okay. That's pretty much all I want for the pink. Maybe a little bit more down here. Just, just for fun. Okay. And what you want to do with this is you want to dry between stages. You don't want the colors to blend because I'm about to do a yellow one. You definitely don't want it to blend. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick heat set. Or move this out of the way. Any questions, anybody? Yep, toothbrush works really great as well. But don't use don't use the the toothbrush that you use to brush your teeth. The same. You crazy people. Don't you be doing some crazy stuff like that? I know you guys. You guys would probably do that just to save on money, right? <laughs>
The thing about the toothbrush, it's a little bit harder to, um, it's a little bit harder to control. I find like when I flicker, they kind of go everywhere. Whereas with a fan brush, I find I have a little bit more control, which, so when I found the, um, fan brush idea, I was a little bit, um, happier. Let's just say, I know this is still a little bit wet and I'm just going to leave it. Um, but I'm going to do the yellow right here. So what I'm going to do with the yellow is I'm actually going to take, um, the mustard seed that I had used earlier and I'm just going to apply a little bit right here, just like that. And then a little bit of, I'm going to take my fan brush and add a little bit of water and I have a little bit of water sitting right here. So I'm just watering it up a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this and do the same thing with the yellow. Okay. And almost gob it, gob it up. Make it a little bit more of a bigger splatter mark, just like that with the tips. Okay. You guys see that? But you must have water in your brush. Otherwise, this is not really going to work. And then you want to do the same thing up here. Okay. Just like so. Just like so. Fabulous, fabulous. All right. And then you want to go ahead and give this a really quick heat set so that it's nice and dry before your next layer. Lindy's Rocks. Yeah, this one is Hottie Patati Hot Pink. And can I show you what I, what, what I was playing with tonight before you guys came along? My sprays, my industrial chic, love them. A little plug in, love them. This is awesome. Love, love, love. If you guys don't have the industrial chic set, you must get it. Oh, I just, look at, I got some paint on my, uh oh, there we go. I saved it. I got a little pink right there, but that's okay. And maybe right there. See, you got to watch. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know what, you guys? Everybody emails me after the show sh saying that I um, enabled them to buy too much. And I'm sorry. Well, not really sorry. <laughs> All right. Let me turn this so you guys can see it better. All right, perfect. So now um, I'm going to go ahead and add one more layer. And the last layer is the gesso layer. And so I like to do this with gesso. Acrylic paint doesn't quite do the same effect. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of gesso, just like that. And then I add just a little bit of water, okay? Just water it down a little bit and it really helps with um, with fluidity for when you're flickering okay and I'm just gonna clean my fan brush a little bit and sometimes I do it with a straight brush too for these last ones but then make sure you cover this up and do the gesso flick and it just gives it a little something I don't know why I just the gesso splatters always just make it awesome okay just like that can you guys see that it's really fun isn't it so much fun to play with and then again one last heat set and then we're done for the heat setting okay but you want those nice gobs on there <laughs> I know. I kind of got you guys hooked on the Lindy's, huh? But I want to know, what do you guys think of this collection? This is not a cute collection. I just love it. I just think it's so stinking adorable. I 
Oh, Yvonne, you're so mean. For those of you that are watching the recording, Yvonne is saying, oh, I'm so surprised Lemore is flickering paint. <laughs> too funny you guys all right okay that's that's about good enough I should say it's a little bit wet still but I'm okay with that so before I go ahead and uh, put my flowers and embellishments on this page I'm gonna do another really fun technique and I love to uh, I'm gonna actually go ahead and just dab some of these off just because I don't want to get my entire arm dirty with splatters of paint so I'm just dabbing some of the wetness off and so now what you want to do this is really cool and I'm gonna put the camera down just a tad okay just like that and we're gonna do a little bit of doodling and I don't know if you saw on this page how cool this is can you see how outlined those rays are and even the frame like I kind of doodled everywhere I'm going to show you this is like the easiest thing on the planet to do and it adds a whole lot of dimension to your layouts all right or to your projects you can do this on anything and so what you want to do is you literally and you don't want a line to be perfect you almost want it to be like over top can you guys see how imperfect the line is it's almost over top of the it's not quite on the edge of the um of the image okay you almost want to be like very rough with it and then you want to do like a scribbly line just like that can you guys even see that let me put the camera down just a little bit more okay can you see that better and then and then scribble and then you want to do that to both sides almost like in a flickering type motion okay really easy it's just doodling and on some you you may not even want to do any sometimes I do X's The more imperfect, the nicer it looks, to be honest with you. So feel free. This is kind of like your creative freedom. If you don't art journal, this is, you know, another way to get that creativity. See how free I am about it? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can do little swirlies. But it adds a little something to the layout. Can you see? How cool that is and then what you want to do is you kind of want to do this throughout your layout so I'm gonna do it here as well and then around It's so freeing it's like I, I go in my happy place when I doodle how about you guys don't you find that for you doodlers doodlers a little bit of creative freedom right fabulous 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 and then you want to do it down here as well okay so And I like to kind of go over top of here just because um, there is that raised edge. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a um, interest, I should say. And then you definitely want to go around your entire page. Okay, and almost be as rough as you can with it. Or just like so. Love, love, love to doodle. Sorry, I'm a little bit off camera. There we go. Okay. And then uh, where other, where else do we, oh, we want to do it here as well. And 
and see how fast it goes too. It's not like it's some, um, it doesn't take very long to do this. And it's so much fun. Fabulous. Fun, fun, fun. It's starting to pop, isn't it? Isn't that cool? And then, of course, you want to do the same thing to the circle, because otherwise, or the sun, whatever you want to call it, otherwise it's going to be weird looking, just like that. And then, last but not least, I did it over here. If this is not your thing, you don't have to do it. But, you know, I encourage you to step out of the box and do something you've never done before. Okay. Just like so. Now we're going to start adding some of our fun, um, you know, stickers and embellishments and stuff. And I'll talk a little bit about the stickers. So let's grab those. Okay. And I'm just going to grab them here on the ground here. All right. So we're going to take this guy, for example. Now... This guy in particular, if you notice, this is sticky, right? It's a sticker. And I know that some of us, when we put stickers down and we um, foam dot them, they and you put them in a sleeve, they end up kind of like warping, right, and sticking to the paper. So what you want to do is you, um, you can either go ahead and take some baby powder, and if you put baby powder on top of it and then add the foam dot, you'll find that you won't get that sticking when you stick it through your... Um, what do you call it, um, um, sleeve. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a foam dot, but before I do that, I'm gonna take, um, I have a whole bunch of Echo Park embellishments or um, brads here. So I'm gonna use some, I don't know which one. I was gonna try and find a yellow one. I think there's one, there's a cool one here. So let's use this one right here, I found one. This is kind of fun. All right, and I'm going to put it right through the center and poke them so easily, okay, just like that, and it gives it a little something. And my baby powder is in a different bag at the moment, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that I have lots of foam dots on either side so that when I put this through a sleeve, it's not going to go through. All right. And we're going to add this about right there. Okay, just like so. So that's that. And then we're going to add the remaining stickers. It's this guy. This guy I love. Do you know I love you so? And what's really cool is that, yes, I could certainly put it up here just like this. But a cool little technique that I wanted to show you is you don't always have to use it the way it's, you know, shown. So you can cut it about right here, okay, turn that over so you don't get it anywhere. And then, because it's a banner, you can create a banner on the other side, okay, just like that. And now you have a cute little banner, and you can add your three-dimensional dots, and make sure you add lots of them so that it doesn't sink down. Take those backings off. And did you know? Just like that. And then this guy right here. And you want to do the exact same thing that you did with the other one. Create a little banner. Fabulous. you guys go on the chat you're crazy you're not a doodle person that's okay you don't have to doodle <laughs> and then you can put this right over top of the layout or the photo okay did you know I love you so and now we want to start putting some of our yummy prima -ness, right and a little bit of stamp a little bit more stamping as well so 
Um, that's it for the stickers for now. But of course, I mean, look at all the stickers you have. So lots of different ideas that you can use with the stickers, right? And so now we want to take our Prima and the girls can post the uh, links of the flowers for you for sure. Oh, before I go on, actually, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys was um, if you're not a splatter person and you don't know how to create a splatter, this is a really cool Tim Holtz stencil. It's called splatters. So if you're not a splatter person, this is kind of what it looks like. It's really fun. Okay. So just, just a little idea to use something different. Now you're going to use several different packages of Prima flowers and a little bit of stamping as well. Like I said, the stamp set I'm going to use is from the Divine Collection. Okay. And it's 950545. Okay. Which is going to be this one right here. Okay. This is the one that we're going to use. So I'm going to put the rest away just so they're out of my table. Because you guys know how cluttered my table gets, right? And we're going to use a couple of these. I don't. I think I'm going to use this one actually. We're going to use this one, and this is uh, Petunia Rondo, five four two six two seven. And look at the packaging. So cute. Love it. As well as uh, five six four four six nine, and this is from the Divine Collection. Really cute little yellow flowers. And then these are old ones, but they're called um, Innocence Collection, 540272. And then last but not least, Florella, 571900. Yes, let me hold up the sticker sheet. Hang on. Yes. For those of you that are watching the recording, they're asking me to hold up the sticker sheet. Okay. Isn't that super cute? Oh, I love it. Like you could create a million projects with this. I just can't wait. So, um, and just so you guys know, I have two videos that I'm editing um, with this collection already. So uh, lots more projects to come. So all we're going to do with these is we're going to create little flower clusters. All right, to embellish our layout. So here's one that's already cut. It's kind of bent a little bit, so you don't have to open it up. When they come, they kind of come like this. They're kind of closed. So you want to definitely open them up, okay, so you can play with them. But here's one. And I should put the camera up just a little bit now. It's a little bit easier for you guys to, to see what I create. All right, just like so. And so this guy is going to go, you can play with them because they have wire, which I love. They're down here, just like so, okay. And I like to use, for my flowers, I always like to use the Fabri-Tac. I think I have one open. Yes, I do. I have one right here. Let's actually open. Perfect. It's almost empty, so I may have to open the other one. And I'm going to apply it down here, just like so. And you guys know how much I like to preserve my leaves because I feel like the earth's going to come to an end and I'm not going to have leaves left or something. But um, I don't know. I've got this obsession about cutting my leaves, right? And you guys already know that. So I cut them in half, and then I can use the other side on another flower. So cut a leaf, and then you're going to take one of your pink flowers. Find one that matches the best. I like this one. It's a little bit more muted. But it really matches with the flowers that she's picked, which is so cool, right? And then we're going to go ahead and add, oh, there we go. My glue is farting. All right. And then we're going to add some leaves to this puppy. This is, this glue is running out. But you know me, I like to suck the life out of my glue. My glue. Like somehow I just won't have enough. Okay, there's a leaf right there. And where did the other one go? Oops. Right there. We're going to add, whoops. I'm going to add another one about right there. Just tucked underneath right there. Okay. And then we're going to add one of these white flowers.
And you want to go kind of over top of the photo. Okay, it kind of gives it a little bit of something. Just like that. And then another leaf, but just half of it. Wouldn't want to waste it. And then have it come out of the page, just like that. Okay. And I'll lift it up so you guys can see. Okay, little flower cluster. But now what you want to do is you want to take this guy and your Faber-Castell um, black uh, paint br or big brush pen. And then I actually go ahead and I lift the petals and I give it a little stamp. And then I tuck it underneath. And then I do one more and tuck it underneath. And I want to show you how cool that is. Isn't that cute? Love it. And so you want to do a little bit right here too. You want to ink that up, just the edge. And then lift. Ta-da. Fabulous. And so just a little bit is poking through and it's beautiful. Now we're going to do one right here. And um, we're going to take one of the yellow clusters as well. Again, yellow flowers. Oh, shouldn't cut the wires with your fussy cutting scissors. Just enough wire. Use your Tim Holtz scissors. Okay, they cut much better that way. And then you're going to open this puppy up because it's so much fun. And you can bend those leaves so beautifully. And that's why they're one of my favorite flowers. Okay. And we're going to apply it about right here. Okay. Just like so, just like so, come on, be, play with me, flower, play with me, sit with me, work with me, baby, work with me. There we go, and then we're going to apply a leaf right over the top. So you want to kind of use a full leaf because you're actually going to see this one because the stem's right there. So you want to actually apply a full one. I know, a full one. What can I do? Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do, right? Just like so. And then you're going to grab one more white flower and half a leaf. And you can have some that are darker than others, of course. That's, you know, there's no such thing as, you know, the same... Actually, this is small enough. I could just use a whole thing. I know, I'm kind of going on the wild side just now. And then applying this, just like that, right over the top with this leaf. It's poking through. Awesome. And then you want to do the exact same thing with the stamping again. And give it a little bit of fabulous. And I do a little bit right here as well. And it pokes right through. Beautiful. Okay. Just like that. And it gives it a little something, right? But the last thing that we want to do, well, it's not really the last thing, is we want to put the I pick you. So we want to take one of our sheets, which I'll grab it's on the bottom here. one of these right here and I love this one and on the back side it's that wood grain so sometimes you don't have to use these just as, just the way they are let me close this just really quickly and you can actually go ahead and just cut the same right out to fit your layout so you fussy cut it right out really easy and you're going to add that with some dimensional dots right to your page. I'm kind of a quick fussy cutter. I do a lot of it so I kind of get uh, good at it and to be honest with you these scissors are the bomb. All right just like that. The bomb. And then you're going to add some dimensional dots to this guy. And I like to use my little ones as well for all those little corner pieces. And we're almost done, you guys, but just one last step. 
And so the ladies, our fabulous admins, can maybe go ahead to random.org and start to choose a winner. Don't quite tell us yet, but you can go ahead and start that process. So if you're on the chat, you'll be eligible to win. Now, let me just cut this little piece off that I don't like. Funky little piece there. There we go, that's much better. And we're gonna apply that right there. Okay. Just as long as you're not covering her face, you're good. All right, I'd pick you. Isn't that cute? She's picking flowers. But last, last step is you wanna take your wet brush and some of that white gesso that you had earlier and you want to give those flowers, especially the yellow ones, a little bit of a whitewash because you'll find that they'll be a little bit bright for you and they'll pop a little bit too much. If you like the brightness, that's fine. By all means, keep it. But um, I chose to give all of my flowers and my leaves a little bit of a whitewash and I found that it tied everything together. Okay, and a whitewash meaning a little bit of gesso with a little bit of water. Okay. That I had left over from my previous project. And then some sometimes I like to give it right here too. Okay, just like that. And that, my friends, concludes the show. Or at least the tutorial part of the show. Isn't that cool? Do you guys like that? Do you love it? Easy, right? Easy layout to, to recreate for y'all. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the actual recording for those that are watching um, the recording. Um, I will post the link below for you, but for those of you that are still on, stay on because we'll choose a winner in just a minute. Okay, so hang tight. <laughs>